Welcome back to Top 5 Auto Repairs. How do you know you have a bad intake manifold gasket or a plenum that's causing rough idle? If you're experiencing rough idle and you change the spark plugs, you change the ignition coil, you cleaned out the throttle body, you change the throttle position sensor, and so on, and you're still experiencing rough idle, maybe the problem is caused by a bad intake manifold gasket. It is tricky to diagnose a bad intake manifold gasket or plenum simply because sometimes the symptoms are not quite obvious. So I'm going to give you guys some hints and clues that you may have a bad intake manifold gasket or bad plenum gasket. If the intake manifold gasket or plenum gasket is barely leaking and is not that severe, you may notice slight RPM fluctuation, you may notice poor gas mileage, you may notice you're going to get some sort of lean code such as P0171 and so on. Now if the intake manifold gasket is extremely bad and it's cracked and it's split, you're going to notice all sorts of engine performance issues. For example, you're going to notice extremely rough idle, you're going to notice an engine misfire, you're going to notice the engine may stall, you may notice extreme RPM fluctuation or extremely low idle, you may notice loud hissing noise, and so on. So again, when the intake manifold gasket or plenum gasket is extremely bad, it is much easier to diagnose it because the symptoms are quite obvious. And if the intake manifold gasket or plenum gasket is barely leaking, the symptoms are not quite obvious. Again, if it's barely leaking, it's going to cause mild RPM fluctuation. The RPM may drop just slightly. You may notice poor gas mileage and you're going to notice uh, lean codes as well. For some vehicles such as GM, Toyota, or Lexus, the coolant passage may actually go through the intake manifold gasket. So when the intake manifold gasket fails, you may also experience coolant leaks as well. Also make sure the map sensor O-rings are not bad. Also make sure none of the vacuum hoses are loose as well. When replacing the intake manifold gasket, make sure you clean up the intake manifold very well. Make sure to remove all the crud or the gasket that's still on it. When installing the brand new intake manifold gasket, make sure it is seated all the way. Make sure you press the intake manifold gasket down. Make sure it does not come out of place because if the intake manifold gasket comes out of place, again, this is going to cause a vacuum leak and you may also experience coolant leaks as well. As you can see here, I'm double checking my work and triple checking to make sure it is seated properly. If you want to, you can add a little bit of silicone on the intake manifold and on the intake manifold gasket. This may also help the intake manifold gasket to stay in place. This is not really necessary, but again, it is optional. As you can see here, I'm going to replace this plenum gasket as well. What I'm doing here is I'm pushing down on the uh, rubber gasket. Basically, if the rubber gasket feels extremely hard or it is cracked or split, you should replace it as well. The quickest way to check for a bad intake manifold gasket or plenum gasket is to use carburetor cleaner, throttle body cleaner, or brake cleaner and spray around the intake manifold gasket area when the engine is running. If you hear a change in RPM, then you know the intake manifold gasket or plenum gasket is bad. I hope you found this video useful. As always, thank you for watching and subscribe to Top 5 Auto Repairs.